nor are there any lorries to shuttle cargo over the Ambassador Bridge into Canada. One hundred and fifty years after people. When it opened as a gateway to Ontario in 1929, Detroit's 1,850-foot-long Ambassador Bridge was the longest suspension bridge in the world. In the time of humans, this was the busiest border crossing between the US and Canada, carrying 25% of the goods, the majority in car parts, traded between the two countries. But as the vertical suspension cables give way, nothing will ever cross this bridge again. Those vertical suspension cables are exposed to the wind, exposed to the weather, and they vibrate quite a bit in the wind. So they're a major wear area and a major maintenance problem for any keeper of any suspension bridge. But in a life after people, there is no one to repair the frays in the vertical cables. The weak spots are basically down at the bottom of the cable, where the cables actually tie into the deck. The vertical cables lay over one of two horizontal white lines known as catenary cables. 37 steel strands, each about a foot in diameter, interweave to form just one of the catenary cables. As multiple cables break, it actually changes the shape of the white catenary cable that holds the whole thing up because it's no longer taking an even amount of weight at each interval. Another vertical cable snaps and a segment of the deck crashes into the river. A 150-foot gap now gashes through the road to Canada. Within seconds, the other sections fall. Two hundred years after people. On the skeleton of the Ambassador Bridge, the white horizontal catenary cable that once held up the span is now helping to topple its remains. That big cable is anchored on either side, on either shore. And when the deck is no longer there, the tension will be uneven. The big vertical towers would bend toward the land side. The tops would, would spread apart, and that would put quite a bit of strain on those towers. The towers finally yield and the last vestiges of a great transportation link disappeared.